Um, just just a quick round of interest. I'm sure you know. Um, but I'm Jang. I work on the marketing side and yeah. And Chris. you guys know me. I'm Chris from Design. So. We have to do it. We have to start. Yeah. With yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a quick intro. Um, but you know, we are running a few minutes late, so I'm happy to dive right in and and go through your questions. Um, so hopefully we'll get through all of them. Why don't we start with Dan, Coffee with Kenobi? All right, let's do this. Good morning, everybody. Is there a possibility to continue Indiana Jones offerings? Just a possibility. We're not looking for spoilers. Um, yeah, you you get the gist. No spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> um, Indy was so fun. I would say, like, you know, we had a lot of great products out there and nothing to share at the moment. We'd love to do more, but we just want to hear, you know, if there's also demand out there, but nothing, nothing to, to share regarding regarding Indy. Cool. All right, moving on. Uh Yoda News. Right. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Um, this was our number one submitted question. We had it sent in over 10 different times in some fashion. Uh, the Black Series creature packs, similar to the Wampa and the Luke and the Sand Trooper Dubek. You know, I know you can't say what's in the pipeline specifically, but are there plans to continue with creature packs in the future? Yeah, well, I mean, you said it. I mean, we can't talk about anything we haven't revealed yet, but it's not off the table. So, I mean, you guys... You guys scraping your own groups and talking amongst yourselves and sharing that data with us. I mean, we're there, we're watching, we're part of those groups. So, yeah, we'll, we'll keep the dialogue going and let us know which ones are in demand for you guys. Because I think that's that's the biggest part is making sure we do the right stuff for you guys. Yeah. Great, okay. thank you. Yeah. Great, Galactic Figures, Chris. Good morning, everyone. Um, you've pipeline revealed a black series two pack with a phase two clone in a battle droid, and you've shown the uh, 332nd clone in a phase one lieutenant's two pack. Are both are both sets part of the clones of the Republic subline? So it's not actually. Um, those are just clones from our own doing. The clones of the Republic is actually a Disney program, so that mace. 187th clone pack is clones from the Republic, as you know. Um, we're lucky enough to do that pack in partnership with Disney. So, you know, for any future clones of Republic pack, definitely also check in with shop uh, shopdisney.com. Uh, but those packs that you mentioned are not part of that program. Okay, thank you. Yeah. But they were fun nonetheless. <laughs> yeah. um, Toy Anxiety, Ryan. Oh, good morning and happy holidays. Holiday? Uh, yeah. Uh, TVC Chopper and Hu Yang are on the way with the Ghost Funded. The steps, uh, what steps is the team making to have essential characters from Ahsoka released in time when it is delivered? Yeah, I mean, we're so excited that the Ghost is coming to us um, next year. And as you know, we've actually shared quite a bit between Rebels and Ahsoka tied to the Ghost between the the tiers and the Ghost, which we all unlocked, for example. But also we have items showing up on shelves right now uh, with Hera and Chopper, HK87, Morgan L. Smith, Ahsoka. Uh, we have Hu Yang pre-ordered. We have things pipelined that hasn't even been shown yet. So there's quite a list of items coming, um, and hopefully that the fans will have quite a repertoire of toys to play with once the ghost shows up on shelf. Um, and that was just listing a few. I think there's there's quite a lot. We can go on and on, um, but we definitely want to world build that that environment once we have the ship in hand. That's awesome. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Mark, Blue Harvest. Hello. Good morning from the UK. Good morning. Um, I, I want to start off with, uh, you know, the problems you've faced, you've faced a lot of problems over the years. And one of them was distribution and definitely getting the products on the shelf and the amount of products. Do you think it's gone the other way now, though? Do you think um, you will have to pause in production? Will there be a pause in production to let ca collectors catch up? and maybe the independent retail as well <laughs> getting swamped with with product do you think there will be a pause at any any time yeah i don't know that we would ever say that there's a a, a, a confirmed pause by any means because i think our fans would definitely want items and use to keep coming 
um, for us, it's always a balance, like keeping yeah. track of when things go on shelf and when things flow out. Um, obviously, with COVID, the last couple of years, it's kind of just we're still it's gotten a lot better, but we're always catching up of when that pipeline of product is coming through to shelves. So we'll keep yeah. an eye on it. We'll um, obviously make sure that like it makes sense what we're doing and when things are going on shelf ideally and they'll even out eventually that's the goal um but we definitely you know wanna we are cognizant of what fans are seeing <laughs> when they're on on shelves yeah. we want to make sure it's a good experience for everyone Brilliant. yeah and yeah. jing and i were talking about this the other day and and i was using an analogy to like a traffic jam on on the road like i mean there's a lot of cars there and you'll see moments where like stuff moves really smooth and fast. And then it'll, then there's a log jam. And it, I think we're in one of those moments where we're expanding and contracting yeah. and kind of reestablishing the normal flow. But yeah, I think like Jing said, we'll get there um, and get back to a more regular cadence. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, coffee. I, I think that was first round. So we'll go right back up to, to the beginning coffee with Kenobi. <laughs> Excellent. This is uh, my first question like that one. This one is also sent in from some listeners. They wanted to ask about the Sabine and Chopper HasLab ghost carded figures with the mural uh, as far as them being planned on being released. And would those who purchase the HasLab ghost get the first opportunity to purchase? I think we're looking at some purchase anxiety. Yes. And I don't blame <laughs> the fans. Um, we try to mention it at uh, PulseCon uh, earlier this year, but we'll say it again for sure. And actually, we have an update um, in the sense that that item will go on pre-order early next year um, in January. So we will stay tuned for more information, but we have our sites set on when we can share those news with our fans about that item. Um, so once we, we discussed this too, once that item is pre-ordered and announced, there is a limited window to back or it's not back, buy into this item. And once you get that item, we we build to demand. So any fan that wants it is able to get it. So it is not early release for the Hazlet backers, but we also made sure that the Hazlet backers that want it are able to get it. There isn't like a sold there's, out quantity. Yeah, there's no cap on the quantity yeah. we're going to put up for pre-sale. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want it as a hazlet backer, we want to make sure you can get it. Um, just definitely buy within that pre-order window that we will announce early next year. Cool. Yoda's news, Mark? Yeah, this kind of goes back to what uh, Mark said a few questions ago. And this is, um, a lot of us have been collecting for quite a long time. Remember the days when you could just walk into a store and it was, you know, the current figures were out on the line. It wasn't that, you know, the quote unquote coolest ones are six months, eight months, 10 months, a year away for pre-order. And we understand, you know, the distribution and it takes time to make things, but do you guys ever see a time where it's going to be like a catch up where the current content that we're watching on Disney plus or the movies or the video games will be available actually in the store to just go and purchase instead of go and pre-order? Yeah, it's a it's a good question. Um, and I think for us, that's always the goal. I think it's the goal probably for everyone. And I think we've done better with that, especially with Ahsoka is a good example. Recently, Ahsoka has come up much closer on shelf. Some have shown up even, you know, while entertainment is live. Um, so that's always something that we strive for to make sure that we can have that you see it on show, show see it on shelf experience that you were just talking about. Um, and we work closely with Lucasfilm and with our distributors and everything along those lines to try to make that happen. So um, when that's possible, we'll definitely aim to do that. And again, like Ahsoka was a good example of a, a recent example of us getting closer to that cadence. Great. Thank you. Um, galactic figures. Okay, so this next question is uh, from uh, reader Jeff, and I think it has to do with uh, a lot of product hitting at the same time, especially uh, this fall with the HasLab Ghost. Um, and he asked, any future plans for a set release date, such as when there was a Force Friday release date? This would help collectors better plan purchases in advance since more release dates have been moved up and product just ships. I think asking collectors to pay $1,000 for product in a month was steep this September, October. Yeah, I so think that, yeah, September, October was was a peak month for, for outlay, but I, I think 
what we try and do, I mean, largely driven by the ghost, but uh, what we try and do is is reveal stuff and pre-order and give everybody a good idea of when stuff's coming so people can budget for that. Because we know, we know it's a lot sometimes for people, but giving that, that stuff up front and visibility to when it's coming so you can plan for it is is an important part of what we do um no plans for a, a set shelf date like fan force friday was i mean but it's it's certainly something that could happen in the future i mean i wouldn't say it'll never happen again i mean those were fun events and I'd love to take part in those but yeah we'll just for now we're we'll we'll keep trying to be as transparent with you guys and giving you as much visibility to when stuff's coming so you can budget around it. Yeah, and thinking ahead for situations like that too, um, trying not to have that, you know, be the reality. Uh, so it's something that we, you know, can certainly keep in mind about items um, revealing and selling in, in the future, so. Okay, thanks. Uh, thank you, Toy Anxiety, Ryan. Hello. Yes, definitely bring back Force Friday. That would be amazing. I would love that. Uh, okay, on with the question. Uh, one of the biggest announcements to come recently was the announcement of the four-inch Epic Hero series. I know these are different teams, but they mentioned Beasts as part of their line. Uh, have you been working with that team at all to see if those Beasts would be compatible with TVC? Interesting question. So <clears throat> we actually can't talk about items that haven't been officially revealed by us, but we can say that you should stay tuned for more to come in January. And then, yeah, we there will be more information at that point to talk about the uh, the four inch line. Awesome. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, Blue Harvest Toys. Right. So my channel is mostly vintage Star Wars. I'll admit that. Um, but the retro line is very big with my viewers, very big, and with me. So what is the future? I, I, the, are the six packs going to continue? continue? And we will, will we eventually get the 96? <laughs> I, I think that's the question everybody wants. Um, so, <laughs> I mean, obviously we love retro as well. I mean, I think I've been more than transparent about my passion for it. Um, and while there's no explicit plans to do the full original 96, I mean, recreations of those Kenner figures will continue to be part of what we do with retro. So, I mean, if retro continues long enough, yeah, let's get there. Um, but that's not part of the plan. Um, uh, I mean, it is part of that, though. So, I mean, you'll you'll continue to see things like that. Fantastic. Uh, Chris definitely lives and breathes retro <laughs> so he's a big proponent of that um on the brand as well i've got, I've yeah, got my there's, questions yeah <laughs> there's a boa fett sitting on my desk within arm's length at all times yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> um coffee with kenobi dan i would say the retro line is the most important invention since fire the catalytic converter so keep it up <laughs> whoa uh, so <laughs> yeah, I know it's a big claim. I'll stand by it. So speaking of the retro styles, has there ever been consideration given to doing a retro style version of the original, like, 1-1 one, one scale Hansel blaster, the Stormtrooper blaster, or, or even better, that classic inflatable, like, beach ball inflatable lightsaber itself? <laughs> that was the that was the first lightsaber I had growing up. Um, uh, no, I mean, we love hearing input like this from you guys, So, but there's there's nothing like that that we can talk about right now, so... Yeah, but but keep keep the shout outs for that sort of stuff coming and the like TVC Black Series groups like you guys do such a great job of of letting us know what your wants are retro and the community behind retro. Please do the same thing. I mean, we love we love hearing that and and like we've said multiple times, like getting you guys what you want is what's important to us. So yeah, I'll be an incessant babbler. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> you're fueling Chris right now. He's like, tell me more about what you're going to hear about retro. Yeah, you guys justify like there's a poster on the wall. Look at that. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, Yoda's news. 
Yeah, hi. Um, I'm actually going to read this one because I'm I'm not a diorama builder. Uh, and this came in from quite a few people that, you know, built different models and whatnot. So vintage scale, as we know, it is the world building scale. As much as we love having the vehicles in play set, some other items that will go a long way without costing a fortune, like an Imperial control console on the Death Star, laser guns, speeder bikes, land speeders, etc. Have you considered any types of these items in the hope that we can keep building world sets? I mean, yes. <laughs> um, there is hope of things coming along those along the lines for things like that. Obviously, like the um, I think you were reading someone else's question, but the the question mm -hmm. said it was it was important for us to understand what the demand is out there, but to build out more of that world building for the that scale as well. Um, we've done it recently with Haslabs and the speeder bikes that came out, for example. We've done it with playsets in the in the past, um, and things like that can is always on the table to be considered. We just definitely just want to hear from the community if there were specific ones that they really want to see um, so that we hear about it and comes into our, our thoughts and our considerations. So yeah, and vintage collection at three and three quarter scale exists because of world building. Like that's why it's there. I mean, that's like core meaningfulness of it. It lets us do fun stuff like the ghosts. So yeah, just keep the requests loud and often. Thank you. Galactic figures. Um, with the pipeline season one, Kanan and Zep for the vintage collection, it looks like there'll be a lot of products to support the ghosts when it comes out, which is great. And uh, however, there are still quite a few characters that interact with the Razor Crest, particularly characters which have actually been made for six inch, like a season one Grief Karga, Mix Mayfeld, Zero, the bounty hunter droid. Um, are, ha are the Hasbro team still thinking about characters to go with the Razor Crest, or have you moved on? Yeah, I, the good thing about the vintage collection is like we never move on. <laughs> so we're talking about the classics again. Like there's, there's everything is always on the table. So I wouldn't say that we've moved on and wouldn't revisit some toys that interact with the Razor Crest, for example. Um, the other good thing about the vintage collection or Star Wars in general is that there's just so much for us to dig into. There's just so much entertainment, so much history. Um, you know, even in the extended universe. So there's just a lot for us to like, we love to dig into. Um, so a good opportunity to know like what some of those figures are really requested is to hear from fans and be like, what do they really want to see? Um, and along those lines, we pay attention. I know there's been a lot of like fan polls, for example. Those are great opportunities for the fans to to let the community know what what is highly requested. And we definitely pay attention to those. Thanks. Yeah. Toy anxiety. Thank you. Hello. Um, I know this question has been asked similarly in the past before, uh, but because we're new to doing this, we want to make sure this gets answered on our channel as well. Uh, what what goes into deciding when a character gets a release? In the case of Carson Teva, he has been featured in pivotal scenes and storylines in The Mandalorian, Ahsoka, and The Book of Boba Fett, is a fan favorite, and the actor portrays him uh, is an avid Star Wars collector. Is there a specific reason why he hasn't received a figure yet? <laughs> no, no specific reason. Um, we're, we're fans, too. I mean, we're looking at the the list you guys create, track, your wants, like all the, the brackets, all that sort of stuff. We, we watch and, and pay attention to all that stuff. But it it's always a balance of overall demand. I mean, with new entertainment coming out, I mean, luckily that's, that's continuing. There's always fun stuff. Um, but for him, there's no specific reason, but it's always good to, to keep him on our radar like this. And, and I mean, we'll continue to say it. We love hearing from you guys about this sort of thing. So... Yeah, if, if he's a figure that you guys think is super meaningful, then yeah, he's going to rise to the top for us. Yeah. Awesome. We're big fans of him as well. Um, and it's awesome because he's been in so many entertainments and we just did his helmet, as you know. Um, so it's definitely... I dressed up as him for Halloween. So, yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> right? He's, he's, a, he's, yeah, a great, <laughs> he's a great excuse to re-release an X-Wing as well. So you can always pump out more vehicles that way too. <laughs> yeah, see, here's... <laughs> Here's a, a patch from my Halloween costume sitting on the table. So nice. <laughs> you just, you awesome. just have everything handy. I do. Time. It's like, yeah, this is my world. <laughs> <laughs> what did you want to hear about this? Yeah. So um, it's good because we hear about him 
he gets brought up in these fan interviews and it's just really helpful for us to hear about it because like every time we hear about it we're like oh yay another comment about him definitely just keep letting us know um what you guys want to see and i yeah. think we definitely will keep that in mind yeah and and be thoughtful too about those sort of things i mean we joke and say like we're 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 looking at that stuff all the time but it's always a juggling act between that character and another character. And like, you have to put them up against, well, would I give up this person to have this person? And like, those are the kind of decisions we have to make all the time. So yeah, the the more data from you guys is, is better. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Blue harvest toys. Yeah. Following on from the last question. I mean, you guys, you'll probably get sick of it. Uh, any chance of vehicles in the retro line, mini rigs, especially. <laughs> <laughs> they are the thing that keeps popping up in debates. Yeah, um, we see that. Uh, we do. I have I have a set of the original mini rigs of my own. Um, yeah, I, I I love the things. Uh, there's there's nothing we can talk about, and I mean obviously yeah. we can't talk about anything we haven't announced. But yeah, I mean if retro continues to be a healthy line, and and that's something that everybody asks for and continues to want, I I don't see why that couldn't be a possibility. Yeah. Thank you. Never say sorry about asking retro questions. Chris is here for you. <laughs> yeah, we could do a whole round of things. I need to cut them off. Yeah, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> Just for retro. I'm mean, here for Coffee with Kenobi. We're, we're back up to the next round. All right. Challenge accepted on that retro line. Actually, now this is more of a sort of helping us understand how the system works. So on average, how long does it take to go from concept to creation to pre-order to a finished product? So people have an idea of how much work and planning goes into a Hasbro Star Wars creation. Um, well, the what we normally say is 12 to 18 months from the time of concept to shelf. And that that varies a little bit depending on what it is, how much work has to go into it, whether it's completely new. If it's a if it's something that we're just seeing and have to dive in a vehicle and like when the N1 showed up, like just the amount of time it took to do that and develop that because it was more complex. I mean, helmets and lightsabers take a little more time. Figures take less time, but not significantly less. But there's more of an established process. It, they're kind of the same thing with little variances over the way instead of like, say, a lightsaber that might be completely different from saber to saber. Um, so those sort of things, like it, it changes. But 12 to 18 months is a good rule of thumb. Um, and then we try and pre-order a few months earlier than the on-shelf date, as you guys know, just to give you guys kind of in that window. So it's that pre-order date is generally more based off of when it's going to hit the shelves than when we when we start the item. So, but those those dates move around a little bit too. Yeah, and we do, and we've been trying to pipeline things for you too, just so that fans have a little bit of earlier visibility even um but there's a lot i mean chris you know simplified it thank you for asking that question first of all because i think it's always good to talk about like the process but chris works so closely with lucasfilm and it's a step and step of, in the development process and then obviously from a marketing standpoint we want to line it up with beats where it makes sense we want to give fans information early where, where we can where possible um so all of that kind of lines up with trying to get the info out to you guys um, when we can. But yeah, there's a whole team back here doing everything um, from the littlest sculpting, painting to, to you know, creating the assets for reveal. Um, but we, we try to do right by fans. Thank you. Okay, Yoda's news. Yeah, I think Dan's seeing my screen because that was my next question. Uh, so thank you for answering that one. It's kind of like getting a double. Um, so this one's going to be sort of like a crystal ball type question. I understand you can't answer it maybe specifically, but for the fans of The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker, you guys have been pretty good about, you know, doing anniversary sets here and there. And are we going to see a movie line possibly from, you know, those figures coming out for an anniversary? I know it's, you know, three, four years from now, but I know you guys like to plan early, or is that just simply off the table at this point for those films? Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah sorry, ahead. Jen, go ahead. I, I was just gonna say, three to four years is is even a little far out for us to be thinking about some of these things. <laughs> but um, no, I mean, none of that stuff is off the table, and anniversaries are a great time for it. So, 
Yeah, so we did have the figures when um when the movies first came out. We just, you know, we'd definitely get to know what fans request. Um, and then we'll go from there. Okay, thank you. Cool. Galactic figures. Um, why is the uniform of the Imperial officer in the vintage collection multi-pack a nice bright white? But every other white suited Imperial, including Thrawn and Krennic, are off white. I, yeah, that's that's one. I mean, we've seen you guys chatting about that online. Um, for those, the ones in the Troop Builder packs, those felt, I think, more like just pristine, clean versions of the characters. Where the the individual figures, there was specific reference to look at and kind of follow that stuff and and ground them a little bit more in those scenes. Um, but but we're looking at that, and we are happy if if the consensus is that you guys like the the more off-white stuff we're happy to to reevaluate that for future releases and and continue to to hone in on things that you guys really want okay thanks yeah toy anxiety all right i think i know the answer to this question but i just want to make sure my assumptions are correct uh through the 90s and 2000s it was common for an entire figure line to be revealed early in the year at toy fair and then released in waves throughout the year. What is the benefit of staggering reveals throughout the year as opposed to revealing a release calendar for all waves at the beginning of the year? Yeah, it's interesting. It'd be it'd be interesting to see what fans like too. I think especially with COVID, it made us giving frequent touch points much more of a reality. So doing live streams, giving fans information throughout the year, which um, I think I thought it would have been helpful to definitely have those more frequent touch points and conversations and also help planning out the year a little bit uh, with news. I mean, who doesn't love to talk about Star Wars? Um, right? Yeah. Yeah. So like every couple of us are like, hey, let's talk about all these items that are coming. So it, it's good. And I think the other good thing about it is also helps us you know, maybe match uh, certain news that are coming, like Gift the Galaxy is a good example of like having a holiday news and holiday beat, um, Ahsoka Entertainment having live stream around that, having the Ghost Has Lab around that time, you know, around San Diego Comic-Con, things like that. So it gives us a touch point to talk about it. And I, you know, definitely with COVID that helped, like, the fact that we're doing more things online just definitely helps spread the news a little bit more. Um, so that's, that's, one of the reasons why we do that um and hopefully you know fans like to hear from us more often so but let us know yeah, <laughs> yeah no this is this is fun i like i like doing this as opposed to photos online somewhere you know this is yeah <laughs> yeah good we like talking to you too i think that's that's good that's good feedback <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's and it's not that we want to hold info from you guys we want to get it to you as soon as we can and in some ways toy fair like you had to hold all the info until that point and yeah. then reveal stuff now as soon as we can we get we get to talk to you guys and reveal things so it it really gives news in more real time the way we do it now yeah, and yeah. we spread it out. Like now we're giving you pipelines, which only started happening a couple years. Uh, yeah, like maybe a year or two ago. And now we're, you know, there's a lot of info we're trying to give you sooner rather than later, um, just so that the fans can get a, a sense of what's happening and what's coming down in the future. Yeah. Pre prepare our wallets and bank accounts. Get ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> you're, help. You're a yeah. place in your shelf for that ghost that's coming. Oh like, my like god, <laughs> I am in such space danger. I still don't know what I'm gonna do, but I'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be amazing. Um, okay, yeah, blue thank you. Toys. Thank you. Right, Chris, you're up. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know if you remember, but Star Wars Celebration, you might have bought a figure off me. Yeah, I remember. Um, he has a place of honor. This is the personal <laughs> question that's been burning in my head. Did you use that yak face to scan for the retro figure? No, I didn't. Uh, he, oh. yak, that was, <laughs> I, I used a different yak face uh, from a, a friend, um, and we scanned that. That you was done. That was that was done <laughs> when I got the one from you. Um, but doing that and getting back into into the figures for that wave is what really kind of sparked my brain and got me looking for him while we were there. That, selling that figure to you to help you complete your collection. Yeah, it it's an important part of it and comes with a great story. So it did help with colors as we were working on it. So it was it was part of the process. Oh, yes. 
<laughs> Chris, you got to just say yes. <laughs> just say yes. Oh, um, son. <laughs> all right. Coffee with Kenobi. I love it. You're doing God's work. Love it. All right. So this isn't really a question so much as just a thank you. Uh, the retro chopper is an absolute delight. The stickers uh, on the dome and uh, just even how the head clicks like the classic R2. It's it's an absolute one of my favorite figures of all time already. So thank you for that. It's great. Yeah, no, I I'm glad you I'm glad you guys like it. Um, yeah, we even we played with stuff like the clicking noise is set up a little different in him. So it's a little deeper and and sounds a little different than R2. I mean, you can't get grumpy noises coming out of it, but it is a little different and fun. So that was, yeah, that was a nice one. Yeah, you guys are just fueling the retro fire for Chris. It's a good way to start. <laughs> it is, yeah. No, we need to, yeah, we need to put lots of these notes in front of a lot of other people. <laughs> Yoda's news, Mark. Yeah, so my question is about, you know, the comic books and the novels. There's been a lot of really great books that have come out, you know, over the last even just six months, there's been several of them. And uh, I know you guys have done typical ones before. Sometimes there's book and packaging. Uh, I think there was a four pack, things like that. Or is that going to I know you can't be specific, but is it going to will you continue to look at new comics that come out and new novels and books and stuff like that when you're thinking about figures to go out even though it's not like a movie tv property yeah i mean absolutely we we've shown that we do actually like with some of our pipelines or reveals like we go back to some of the old comics as well um and go through those um and gaming to star killer was one of the most popular toys this year um so it's it's definitely something that we we loved doing and there's definitely fans on the team who's been really excited about doing some of those figures out there as well and we'll keep in mind so there's definitely things that like you know if if it makes sense and there's demand and it's a good moment to do it we we will keep it on the radar so definitely possible yeah and i think too important like we've talked with all the other stuff you guys let us know if there's if there are things you feel like our standout important ones that we've missed or you want us to to take a look at yeah excellent thank you galactic figures sorry chris yeah um for the black series will the thigh swivel come back especially for dynamic characters like jedi sith and Mandalorians? it's not needed for characters like mon mothma but it was missed with the padawan ahsoka malagas and a few others Hopefully, everyone in the Heir to the Empire set will have it. It just feels like a step backwards. And by the way, the uh, four-pack for the Heir to the Empire was received really, really well by my community. So, No, that's that's great to hear. Um, uh, for the the thigh articulation, I mean, that that's something that we're, we're continually trying to improve um, the, the aesthetic of figure sculpts, too. Like, the same as we try and improve the articulation. And on some of the figures, not having a slice through a, a hunk of their anatomy, we felt like it was important to to some of those figures. And on the ones where we've done that, we we have opened up the ball and socket joint a little more to allow for a greater range of motion and to get it to feel a little more realistic in how those those figures move um, without having the, that visual step and slice in the thighs. Um, but it it is really what works best for the figures. I mean, some of the ones that are more highly posable or you see in in stronger poses, like those will probably continue to have that mid thigh break. But it's it's not a hard and fast rule. It's just kind of what makes sense for the figure at the time and the detail on that figure. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. To anxiety. Uh, I think we only had the four questions. Uh, so I think I'm just going to keep passing things along and not hold things up. But yeah, let's just keep going with the retro line as much as we possibly can. So I'm just going to keep giving shout outs to that. More droids, more more R2 units. Cool. <laughs> the more the better. All right. Thank <laughs> so awesome. you. But no, thank you. Thank you. Cool. All right. Blue Harvest Toys. Right. So I'm a big design fan. I've actually just got... Bob Breakin's Palatoy book today. So I'll be reading that for the rest of the day. Um, the, the sculpts are amazing, by the way. But do you get any of your original ideas to go into the designs? 
Uh, yeah, all the time. I mean, the, I mean, that's part of the design process on these things is especially on new figures, things that haven't been done before. Um, the, the team gets to kind of make some of those calls. Um, sometimes there's a, a detail that isn't seen on screen, getting to add that sort of thing in, whether that's for me on a vehicle, like an internal detail that, that isn't seen that we get to design something behind the scenes. Um, the ghost, you guys saw some of that where there are panels that come off the top and there's engine details, those sort of things. Yep. So yeah, we get to, we get to do that sort of stuff all the time. And it's, it's never not amazing to be able to contribute to star Wars that way oh, as yeah, a designer. I can imagine. So. I can imagine. Yeah. Great. Um, so we actually do have five minutes left. I'm happy to just go through one more round, Robin, for anyone who do have questions that we'd love to answer them. Um, so coffee with Kenobi. Actually, I don't. I'm about to teach a class. I'm about to have oh, a bunch okay. of high school students <laughs> running here. So I want to thank you all so much for your time. I hope you have a great Christmas season. Thank cool, you, you so too. Much for coffee with Kenobi, Dan. So, see ya. All right. Yoda's news, Mark. Yeah, I had another one, but you guys already answered it, so I won't go ahead and make you repeat the same thing. But I just wanted to echo what everyone else said earlier that I love these. I think they're a lot, they're not better than, but I think they're a lot more fun than just the standard. I mean, it's like 20 years now, we've been doing the whole Toy Fair thing in February, and then it's kind of like you trickle along, and then maybe San Diego or, you know, now New York Comic Con, different things. But I think it's really cool that we get these. You know, little Hasbro Pulse events, the Q and A's with you guys, the just random email, hey, look, and it's out of nowhere, and we can surprise our readers with something new and interesting instead of it just being one time a year. It's you know six, seven, eight, nine times a year. I think I think it really keeps you everybody engaged. Whereas normally you got that this summer is kind of boring. Now there's more to look forward to. So we know we're going to get little things every so often. So just thank you and have a great holiday season. Look forward to more of these. Oh my gosh, you're gonna make me cry. That's so sweet. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Um, I appreciate the the comments. And you know, we definitely want to keep doing it and keep talking to the fans about all the news that we have coming out. So I appreciate it. Galactic figures, Chris. Yeah, so um the Wall Street Journal broke the news yesterday that there's gonna be a lot of layoffs at Hasbro. Um it might be a little too early to comment on that at all, but uh it's really sad to hear, um, do you know, uh, how this is going to affect Star Wars figures coming out? Uh, how is this going to affect the Star Wars team? Or is it just too early to comment on that? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the info out there is um, the only info that we have to share at the moment. I will say that you do not have to worry about the Star Wars team. We are a very, very committed group. Um, so there's so many fans and passionate, like from ev from everyone in this organization that works on this brand is focused on, on getting those great figures to you. Just like Chris and I are here right now, our phones are off, we're focused and we're talking to you guys about it. So, um, you know, thank you for, for mentioning and commenting, but nothing to share beyond that. But I, I wanted to make sure the fans are rest assured that our focus was definitely just making sure that you guys get the best toys um from the from our our group our team thank you thank you uh toy anxiety uh to save us before i got nothing else but again merry yeah, christmas to course. you everyone <laughs> and the team <laughs> and uh we look forward to doing this again in spring i can't wait to see what the new year brings it's very exciting yes Sorry, yeah. sorry to put you on the spot yet again. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, it's all good. It's my you. fault, not yours. <laughs> all right, bring us home blue harvest toys. Oh, I could do this all day. Um, right, I was going to ask this. One of the questions have already been asked about what's happening with Indy, but obviously you can't say anything about that. So what I'm going to ask is to end it all. There's a lot of brands at Hasbro, figure brands, Marvel, Star Wars, GI Joe. How would you tempt a new collector to start collecting Star Wars? Interesting. So I luckily we work closely with Lucasfilm that there's like some great entertainment out there and we're able to show figures as part of that new entertainment. Ahsoka was a good example of that showing on screen and then having those figures to play with uh, very shortly after. To me, it's like whatever speaks to you as a fan 
whatever entertainment you saw, whether it's recent with Ahsoka, whether you're watching Clone Wars on Disney Plus again, like whatever makes you happy, there there's so That's much cool. history in Hasbro with the store, the star, like Star Wars toys between retro, uh, Black Series vintage role play. There's just a lot to dig into. Just look at what you want and what you like and what spoke to you and what you watched um, on TV or, you know, wherever that, you know, was really engaging to you and then go from there and build from there. Yeah. Well, I think that's, that's one of the beautiful things about Star Wars is that it's, it's cultural in so many ways. And, and what our job is in, in a way is to give people a connection to that and to and to develop that connection to Star Wars um and in a physical form so it and hopefully i mean whether that's somebody coming in and kind of rediscovering Star Wars toys through retro like oh i had that when i was a kid and now oh look look at what it's become and kind of moving on into other things or whether that's a kid for the first time getting their first lightsaber and picking up a a lightsaber squad chewbacca lightsaber kind of thing like the I mean, something like that is is a fun a fun way for people to to rediscover and grow. So yeah. All right. Well, we are at time. Thank you guys so much for spending the morning or wherever you are, whatever time period, afternoon for Blue Harvest Toys evening. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for chatting with us, and we hope to talk to you soon. And happy holidays. Right. Thanks for having us. Happy thank holidays. you very much. Yeah. Thank thanks, you. guys. Okay. Right. Bye. Bye.